What's one of the cool things I remember when I first started in my sales career, I used to criticize the the transition, like oh these salespeople that would transition from job to job after every few years, and I'd criticize it, and then, and then like I launched my own company, and I'm like, dude, I learned so many things from selling for IBM, and then selling for Google, and then selling for this company. Mm-hmm. and running my own two companies that one was a success one was a failure like the transition and going to different places and being forced to learn different things is like i think where you take it to the next level yeah. guy like you dude you probably learned tell me about everything that you learned like hustling mlm supplements to then doing your own fitness to then like life insurance or whatever like tell me a little bit about you know that whole experience and I want to touch on one thing you just said there, because I, again, I even think hiring managers get this wrong. Who do you think I'd rather hire? Someone who was a top performer at one place for five years, or someone who's been a top performer for two years at three different places? Yeah, I mean, I'd go with the three years, to, uh, top right, three performer, years. three different places or whatever. Yeah. Hand, hands down, because it shows me they're adaptable, right? Adaptable, like, yeah. And I'll, I'll put those two against each other any day any single day and i think even young salespeople coming up sometimes look at what i have to stay for three to four years because it's going to look bad on my resume you know what doesn't look being bad on a resume being number one (laughs) no one will care if you are number one for a year and the number one again for a year and the number one again for a year guess what if you will give me another year of one percent performance come on in homie we'll hug it out then i'll send you on your way in another year right so just be the best no one cares about how long you've been at a company so back to the original question i guess what and I've that learned. goes against like 99 percent of what people think right yes it's it's silly to me and i for this will probably be a different conversation but the the things that go on in the sales industry that are like just completely wrong or backwards just just boggle my mind they really really do it goes against a lot of things we know about people and we know about motivations we know about drive sales goes against almost all of it and we have to find a way to to fix that you know and the the industry is in a tough place right now i think i really do it's in a hard place in terms of it's getting tougher but we as reps or we as leaders aren't getting better we're still trying to do all the same shit people were doing before and it's not working as well and we can't figure out why it's like well yeah. obvious why you just gotta fix it yeah and i know guys like you are doing things that are different i'm doing a lot of things that are different and new and and what you see is you see a lot of the criticism a lot of people like well why are you why are you so out there kevin like why are you doing all these new things why are you trying all these different approaches why are you hiring people that left their job you know every year like you, dude i guarantee you, you got to be getting criticized for that from other people yeah. you're seeing and it's like okay mm-hmm. well they made you know three to five million at their other company and if they could do that here and they prove that out five times over like done yeah i think sales leaders underestimate how much they can learn from a top performer like if i have someone come in who is just otherworldly and i have them for an entire year you don't think i can learn a few things from them that i can apply out to the rest of the 99 percent that levels everyone up just a little bit so even when that person goes i'm still in the black You know, like, again, back to one of the earlier things we talked about, pattern recognition. I look for patterns. What, if you ask most top sales reps why they're successful, most of them can't actually tell you. They'll say one of two things. They'll either say, oh, it's natural or I outwork everyone. Okay, bullshit. If your results are 10 times greater than the person next to you, are you really working 10 times harder than they are? You're not. So I look for the patterns and the behaviors. I, I know I drive my managers nuts with this. Is I ask them the behaviors. I don't care about the numbers. I know the numbers. What are the behaviors leading to the numbers? And if I can pick up on a pattern of a top performer, right? Man, Brandon, every time he does a demo, he asks these two questions at the start, and this is how he asks for the close. That's a pattern. I can now take that, build a process around it, and teach an entire team how to do it. So one year, I'll take a top performer for one year. Shit, I'll take a top performer for six months because I'll learn enough to give the rest of the team something, right? And that's what I look for. Yeah, that's amazing. And then when you're trying to study these patterns, because yeah, you could be like, okay, the top performer, looking at the Salesforce dashboards, they've got 117 calls, 230 emails, 78 voicemails, 100 invites for the day or whatever. Uh, eight meetings booked, six meetings held, five closed one. And you're like, that's great. And you could say, hey, everyone just do that. 
But mm. then like like you mentioned with the pattern, how 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 should they do that? I feel like a lot right. of sales leaders they miss that. So like when you're trying to study these patterns and study these top performers, how do you get that knowledge and knowledge transfer or or get that stuff out of them? Mm-hmm. It's more often than not, you can't get it out of them. You just have to observe it, right? There are things that you do that make you successful that I can almost guarantee you're not aware of because they're a habit to you. They're unconscious to you. You don't even know that you do it or do it differently. Whereas someone like me, if I were just to observe you, if I watched 30 of your demos, 30 of your demos, you don't think I could pick up on the things that lead to you being a better sales rep than the person next to you, right? You may not realize it because it's the 10,000th time you've done it, but I only need to listen about 20, 30 times to realize, ah, this is what he does differently. And I chunk it, right? So each, if I'm talking about demos, but this works for prospecting too, right? Like the opener, the questions, the value prop, the close and the objections. That's all that goes into any sort of sales conversation. What do the best do differently? And if I can't hear anything differently in the discovery, well then shit, you must be doing something different in the demo. If I can't hear anything different, like you just chunk it out and see, but this is what you asked me earlier, like what have I learned going industry to industry to industry is that messaging matters more than anything else. Messaging, right? Because if you make 50 calls and I make 50 calls and messaging didn't matter, we should always have the same results. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you'd all right. use the same message and it'd be right. water so under the bridge. So like activities are important, but at the end, I still, it boggles my mind and I don't understand it. No one really talks, especially in the sales leadership world, there's this dichotomy. You got the, the thought leaders that talk a lot about messaging, but sales leaders don't. And it's like, what hat? Like, all right, you perfect world, perfect world. You always got your ideal persona on the phone. I can promise you most people would still fail because they don't know how to message it right. And so that's what I've learned going through different industries is how to craft a message that resonates with people. So most of my scripts now are relatively fill in the blank because the formula is there. I understand how people think. I understand what language to use. I understand language patterns and rhetoric and copywriting, like all the things that drive emotion. So the messaging matters, man. And I don't think enough people understand that is what's actually happening on the demo. You did everything right. You got all the stats. I got perfect. Let's walk through this. I have seamless.ai leads. So I got direct contacts for everybody. And I got sales loft so I can make my local dials and send all of my cadence emails. Yep. And I've got Zoom to record it and I've got something to do it. And I get a hundred CEOs on the phone. If I don't have the right tone, the right messaging, the right value prop, the right questions and the confidence to ask for it, it still doesn't matter. And that's that's the secret of the 1%, man, is like the messaging. Uh, how, do you, how do you communicate with people? Because if you're writing shitty emails, it doesn't matter how many you send out. If you have a shitty script, it doesn't matter how many calls you make. If you have poor training, it doesn't matter how good the script is because no one will do it.